All right, folks, <clears throat> today I wanted to explain to you the finance project, um, just so that there's total clarity on what is expected of you and what it is that you'll be submitting. So by 11.59, I probably should tell you when. Um, so by 11.59, let me go ahead and write on this. Bloop, 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 bloop. On the 5th, that's Sunday, um, you should have the, fi the following file submitted to Canvas. A PDF or doc file of your paper. When I say doc, that means like a Word document. Okay, Microsoft Word. Don't share a Word online uh, thing with me. Don't uh, set, I've had students send me WordPad. I don't even know what that is. Um, if you're gonna type it up, in doc use a doc file okay don't share a google doc any of that it's got to be a microsoft word document or a pdf okay one of those two uh number two a pdf or scan of jpeg picture files of your calculation by hand when you submit picture files make sure it's not this format i've seen some folks submitting pictures and it's heic files I can't read those. I don't know what those are. There's no way to convert them. They're a nightmare. Don't do it. Make sure that you're submitting JPEG files. So you should have your um, calculations by hand submitted um, and you should have a PDF scan or JPEG picture files um, of the printout information regarding your car. That doesn't mean you have to actually have it physically printed. Um, what you can do is print to PDF and submit that. That's great. Um, and none of this seems to make any sense for right now, but this is what the final product should look like. Okay, you should have, um, it should probably be around five or six files, honestly, but you need to have a PDF or doc file of your paper, a PDF JPEG collection of files for your calculations done by hand, and a PDF scan or JPEG picture files for the printout information regarding your car. Now, here's, I'm gonna walk you through kind of the instructions and the rubric so that you know all the expectations. So, on this project and your Excel project, you're looking at about 15% of your grade. Okay. Submit a one to two page report paragraph form, okay, with some breaks for by hand calculations with the loan formula, et cetera, along with the printout from your car website. When I say paragraph form, what I'm really not saying is, or what I'm saying is not a bulleted list of answers, okay? What I've had students do in the past is they've gone through the instructions and um, just kind of read off of the instructions. And yeah, that's not gonna work for me. Um, I want you to write the paper like you're a college student and you're in college and you're going to, um, you know, do this in paragraph form. It, it's a weird thing to have to say this, but complete sentences, okay, yeah, college level writing. Um, make sure that you take the time to proofread it to make sure that it's college level writing, All right? Now, <clears throat> here's what you're gonna do. You're going to think of what your dream car is and explain why it is, All right? <clears throat> Focus on the car itself or the base model here. Um, there's gonna be packages and options that you'll put into the car later. You're gonna to go to the website for your dream car and find their version of a build my car application. Now there are some types of cars that don't have this option. I'm gonna steer you away from those. I'm gonna encourage you to not engage with those, particularly if they're dealership only order, uh, made to order type cars. I know Jaguar does that. Um, there's a few other dealerships or make and model of car that do that. Stay away from made to order. Don't do it. All right, but we'll talk about that when we get to tips. <clears throat> uh, you're gonna use the application to choose all the options you want and include in the car. List a couple of the most important features that you've included in your dream car and explain why you need them or just want them. I mean, heavens, you don't actually need any of it, but you know, why you want it? Why is it your dream? So this is on the rubric, um, and this kind of, I'm trying to kind of walk you through like point by point for your rubric. So what I've explained here is the printout from the website. You have to make sure that you have that submitted. Your dream car and why, the features and options and why, at least two. 
So make sure that you're actually spelling out like two of these options and you're explaining why you chose each of these options. Um, I had in the past, what I've had a lot of students do is just choose one option um, and explain kind of why they chose that one and they only did one. Or I've had students choose their two options and they didn't feel like they needed to explain. Somebody would say like, oh, I got this exterior package with the rear spoiler and everything. And they'll just leave it there. And it's like, okay, but why? Why did you want that? Why did you want the exterior package with the rear spoiler? It feels like you're assuming that it's just like objectively awesome and that's what I would want, right? What everybody would want, but I don't know. I think rear spoilers are silly. So I would need you to explain why you like that, okay? Um, the next thing, <clears throat> you need to complete the build my car process and get the sticker price for your dream car. Um, you're going to print or, you know, print a PDF or save uh, to print later. This final screen listing the car options and costs. Submit this project with your, or submit this printout with your report. I have tons of students that miss that. And if you look at that, boom, that's five points. That's a big deal. That's a lot. Um, so make sure that you do that. And that's an easy five points. It means it's there. Now, keep in mind that there are hidden costs to buying a car. It's not just like walk into the dealership, you know, drop the money on the table and walk out. Um, you've got sales tax, you've got license or title fees, license and registration fees, dealer fees. You know, make sure that you, um, make sure that you research these, these things. Okay. Make sure you find out how much they are. Um, and make sure that you cite those um, in your paper, okay? So right here, you see that the sales tax title, license registration, blah, 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 dealer fees and everything is included and the final cost, okay? So make sure that that's all present. You know, if you look at that, that's about eight points right there. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna investigate two different financing options, okay? write down any financing financing op options the company is offering okay so sometimes you may some dealerships they'll offer you like two different financing options okay um i want to really drive this home if you click the buy button you're not committing to buying the car okay you're, you're not you're not doing that so don't worry about that um the car website's gonna have at least one financing option um, if the website has two financing options, use those for your calculations. For the love of whatever you believe in all that is holy, please don't use a lease option. Don't lease a car. Just don't, just like life advice. Don't lease a car. Just don't do that. And don't use that for the project. If you use a leasing option for the car, you're going to lose some points because I'm not asking you to lease your dream car. I'm asking you to buy your dream car. If the website has just one financing option, then contact a financial institution, such as a bank or a credit union. I'm going to advise you to go with the local, a local credit union, okay? Local credit union. Those are awesome, they're easy to work with, and you'll get pretty quick responses from them. I imagine over email, but you'll definitely get responses from them. Uh, sometimes local dealers will advertise financing deals. Um, if you still cannot find a second option, send me an email and um, we can make up some, all right? You may not use a 0% APR option, okay? Our point is to investigate what happens with the interest. First off, zero APR financing option. You see these on car commercials and you see these often. They're not real. It's, it's total garbage, totally made up, total trash. If you look at all of the um, hidden figures and everything attached to it, like, it's not 0% APR, so don't buy it for one second. Don't believe that, okay? So uh, don't use any of those options if you see them uh, even attached through the dealership. So right there, I mean, this is 32 points of your project, okay? So make sure that you state the options and make sure that you state the down payment and the amount that's financed. Make sure that you actually show your monthly payment ca calculations. You're gonna be doing these by hand doing those by hand. Total amount paid with the calculations. You're doing that by hand. Okay, you're going to compare the options uh, to the highest overall paid. You're obviously going to want to go with the loan that has the lower um, sum total payment. And then you're going to choose whichever one of those um, 
financing options uh, is the cheapest, and you're going to give a rationale for why you chose that one. All right. So uh, make sure that you're stating those two financing options explicitly. Make sure that you're stating your down payment and the amount financed. Okay. Now here's where you are going to actually do your computations by hand. Okay. So um, I explained that on the previous slide. Make sure that you compute each of these by hand. Okay. I know that there's some calculators that are going to do it for you. Don't use those. Do it by hand. Okay. You've done. Um, you've definitely done loan computations where you're finding the monthly payment. Okay. Now, using either of those financing options, uh, this is what this is a part of the project that actually students tend to not do. Folks just like don't read this part of the directions. The most common thing is that students don't do this. And it's 10 points, so that's silly. Read this. Here's what you're doing. You're gonna choose one of the financing options and you're gonna work the problem a different way. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a monthly payment that you can actually afford. Okay, so let's suppose I wanted to get my Jaguar XJ whatever. Um, I'm not gonna do that because that's a car that's made to order, so don't do that. Um, and what's gonna happen is, let's suppose I say, okay, well, I can actually afford a $150 a month payment. That's what I can actually afford to pay. How long am I gonna be paying that car off, right? 30 years at this payment, 40 years, right? Choose one of your financing options with like your percentage rate um, and uh, yeah, go from there. Choose like, the financing option that you have with like your interest rate and figure out how long it would take you to pay off your car, right? Um, if you, uh, if somehow your monthly payments computed in the first part were already reasonable, then you should still need to choose a different monthly payment for this part and show your work with the loan formula. Okay. So make sure that you're really like reading this through. All right. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is state one thing you learned from the project. Um, the, I guess, a mistake that uh, we made in first drafting this up is um, we wanted honesty. So I've had students submit their projects and say, I actually didn't learn anything from this. Okay, cool. But tell me why. Tell me why you didn't learn anything, okay? You don't have to, you don't have to lie to me. You don't have to, uh, you know, you don't have to tell me I had some profound impact on your life through this project. Um, if I didn't, uh, ultimately what I need you to do is explain to me what it is you took away from this. If there was nothing you took away from this, I want you to explain to me why you already have like an understanding of finance, um, where, or where you obtained that um, understanding of finance. This should not be like a huge thing. Okay, this is a pretty short paper. So let me walk through just some tips. These are some, student, some, some things that students have run into um, over the semesters of doing this project and some issues that I've seen. First, don't shop for used cars. The features on those are already fixed. So like if you're shopping, if you're going on CarMax and you see like, you know, if your dream car is very practical, which, oh man, I've gotten some very practical dream cars. Um, if your dream car is super duper practical and you say, oh, a 1998 Toyota Corolla, um, I found this one on CarMax and it's got a CD player, which I really like. It's like, okay, but you didn't choose that feature. So you don't get to explain to me why you wanted that feature. What I need you to do is to get a new car, okay? Those features you actually have options for. The Toyota Corolla you see in the CarMax lot, like that's, it's the color it is. It's got the damage it's got on it. It's got like, so don't mess with that. Um, go with a new car. Even if it's a new car that's incredibly practical, nothing wrong with that. Um, you're going with a new car. It's going to be just the easiest to do the research for, for real. Um, second, and I can't emphasize this one enough, don't call in dealerships for expensive cars. Don't do it. Um, I had one student call into a Jaguar dealership and, um, you know, didn't mention that this was for a school project and they chose their dream car and they chose all the features in it. And some of those cars from Jaguar are made to order. So 
they actually made that car. And when the student said, okay, like I'm actually, this is just for a school project, that salesman was justifiably incensed. First off, they run off of commissions. So that salesman just lost, just felt like they lost about $20,000 um, for that year. Something absurd like that because they get a commission. They get paid a little bit for selling that type of car. So yeah, they were upset justifiably so. And second, there's a Jaguar that was just sitting around that was built um, or an order was put in for the bill that luckily they canceled it in time, but whew, scary stuff. Um, so make sure that you're not calling in dealerships unless you absolutely have to. And if you are calling in dealerships, lead with the fact that it's for a school project. Like they pick up the phone and you say, hey, my name's blank. This is for a school project. I need to drive that home lead with that. Please, please, please don't spend like 20 to 25 minutes of those folks time um, and then tell them it's for a school project. There may have been folks who walked on the lot that they missed out on at that point. Okay. Remember these folks are getting paid commission. All right. The third thing I want to drive home, make sure that you're proofreading your paper. Sounds dumb, but make sure you're doing it. Okay. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a brilliant writer, but I can identify the wrong there, 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 two, 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 et cetera. Um, I would see if you could seriously put it in front of the writing center folks or put it in front of another person's eyeballs. Um, the college level writing expectation is first off incredibly reasonable because you are college students. And second off, like, I mean, it's not that tall of an ask. Uh, so really make sure that you're taking the time to proofread it. Um, it's very clear when somebody did not put the effort in. Okay. So just make sure that you're doing that because it's not just that they're lo If you write this paper poorly, you're not just going to end up losing points on the grammar and all that jazz. If you didn't put the effort into at least making sure that the things you're writing make sense, it's very likely that you've missed a lot of other stuff too. So really like if you take the time to write the paper, well, I think what you'll find is that you're going to spend a lot of time, um, on the other details as well. Okay, so ultimately it's like a correlation causation thing. All right, last thing. And I put this in red, why did I do that? Well, I'm serious about this. Don't put this off to the last minute. I'm not checking my email Sunday night. That's not happening. I wanna be clear, I'm not gonna do that. If you send me an email at 11.15 p.m. that there's a burning building situation with your project, I'm not going to get it because I'm not a person checking my email at that ghastly hour because I'm not a remote person. I'm a real person who is teaching remotely. So it's really important that you know that, for real. Um, I've had a lot of folks putting a lot of stuff off to the last minute and they've sent me these last minute emails. And I mean, I'm just, I'm not checking my email at 11.15 at night. I'm not checking my email at 11.58 at night. That's not happening. So in order to make sure that you're actually on top of the due date, you may have to do it early, all right? Good luck, folks.